Okay, so there is actually a new face that is expected to now be the Secretary of State in the Trump cabinet. His name is Rex Tillerson. He is the Exxon CEO, the Exxon chief, whatever. Uh, the point is that he is one rich motherfucker because he is ahead of one of the, he's the head of one of the biggest energy companies in the world. So, um, he has very close ties to Russia, actually, and we're kind of going to get into that, but this dude is rich, and I feel like that's the overlying point, and there's another even bigger overlying point that I need to make, and you guys will um, understand in a bit, but here's the first quote, is an article from New York Times, quote, Rex W. Tillerson, the chief executive of ExxonMobil, whose extensive deal-making for the energy giant has plunged him into global politics from Yemen to Russia is expected to be offered the Secretary of State post this weekend by President-elect Donald J. Trump, according to two people close to Mr. Trump's transition team. Alright, so, basically they're just breaking down the kind of links he has with other countries because of his uh, his position with ExxonMobil, and it does bring up an interesting point as to there being possibly a conflict of interest here for what the Americans want and his business, or we're going to see what happens with that. But basically, um, all I can see is dollar signs and corruption and lots of oil and a lot of stuff like that. So uh, we got a classic case of, you know, Bush type, Cheney-esque type things and just just corruption, man. Um, so as I said, uh, he actually has ties to... Putin and like they actually gave him some kind of award like a friend award or some shit in 2013 so that seems to be interesting because of taking our uh pro well not problem but what many people are complaining about of how the Russians are intervening and stuff and well supposedly obviously there's no fact to show that but um there's a lot of stuff going out about that and it seems to be of interest because he has very close ties to Putin and, you know, apparently Trump is like Putin's, you know, uh, they'd like to be friends and stuff like that. So we got to uh, now the the House Republicans obviously don't like the Republic or not the the Russians, the House Republicans, the Senate Republicans don't like uh, the Russians, but Trump does. So here we go. Quote, Senator John McCain, Republican of Arizona, said on Saturday that Mr. Tillerson's ties to Mr. Putin were, quote, a matter of concern to me. Uh, I'd have to examine it, he said on Fox News, adding that Vladimir Putin is a thug, bully, and a murderer, and anybody else who describes him as anything else is lying. I just like to find it funny. Well, personally, um, I believe that John McCain did support the Iraq War, and if he did, I just take your comment as a joke that you just made. But that's for another time, right? So basically what they're saying is that we're also going to see possibly like some fight back within the center of the house. Although I do think that they always will bow down to President Trump because they defeated their, you know, establishment Republican ass. So that being one thing, the other one being that clearly um, it seems that there might even be somewhat conflict between Trump and the House and Senate Republicans. Because especially on the Russia thing, when it comes to foreign policy, they are definitely not agreeing on that. A lot of the House and Senate Republicans are very establishment s guys, and they don't they don't like the Russians. Um, but anyways, getting into the bigger outlying point, this dude is a rich motherfucker, and it almost seems like it's some random C not random, but uh, some CEO of some big bank, like Goldman Sachs, being appointed to his committee, or some other big ass company. It seems that it's just a bunch of fucking rich people getting appointed to his cabinet. And honestly, I've seen headlines, I've seen articles saying that his cabinet is projected to be the richest cabinet in history. And I think the uh, last richest one was George Bush, his cabinet. So when you're ranked around there, you know that corruption is going to be high. So it seems very interesting to me that... Trump has said, you know, drain the swamp, and all of Trump supporters are saying that he's going to drain the swamp. I got news for you, and I've been saying this many, many times in many different videos. You can go back and look at those. He's played you guys. He's played you guys for everything. Any Trump supporter out there who's not a billionaire who donated to him or some shit, he doesn't give a fuck about you, and that's the reality about it. He's going to have the richest cabinet out there. How can you care about the public and the American people's 
priorities when you have literally a conflict of interest within your own cabinet. It is a virtual impossibility. If someone, if a CEO of Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs, one of the biggest banks committing mo- one of the biggest amounts and cases of fraud to the point where it was almost, it was almost custom, it was almost custom, was to commit fraud. They have a CEO in Trump's cabinet. How can a, a CEO of a bank that literally had fraud as its business model have not coinciding ideas with what the American people would want? It doesn't make any sense. Obviously, there's going to be a conflict of interest. And we already know money talks. And now that they're given power, they're going to do whatever the fuck they want. And that's the priorities of them and clearly not of the American people. Drain the swamp? I fucking think not.